Hello and welcome to Tuesday Newsday, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. Software exclusives like you see on the Oculus Store that don't work on other headsets may be a thing of the past pretty soon here. And a new prototype set of VR glasses has emerged by Oculus. And at the same time, Oculus is totally discontinuing an entire headset from their lineup. That and so much more, we've got a lot to cover this week. But first, I mentioned a few weeks ago that I will forever keep this channel Raid Shadow Legends free, and that's true. I've been extremely careful about letting anyone touch this channel sponsor-wise, which is why I'm extremely excited to announce a new partner for this channel. Thank you very much Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. Look, VR is an expensive endeavor. Keep your money and information safe with Ridge. This is a techie wallet made for tech enthusiasts. Having a built-in RFID blocker to stop digital pitpockers from stealing your precious VR money. Not only is it constructed out of materials like aluminum or even titanium, but every Ridge wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. Right now, you can also get 10% off your order using code THRILL at checkout. There's plenty of colors to choose from, it's sleek, and I've been loving mine. Go give it a look by the link in the description or pinned comment. But now, let's just get right into the news. So to start out, we all know exclusives suck, but they're on their way out and Valve just took another giant step towards that. PlayStation VR has had quite a few awesome games that PC or Quest owners would just never be able to play. And the Oculus Store has had some of the most polished VR games ever made, like Lone Echo, Stormland, Asgard's Wrath, and more on the way like Medal of Honor. The problem isn't so much that these games are on Oculus's own platform. I could deal with that like I deal with Epic exclusives, but VR exclusives are a little different. Different. Say you have an HTC Vive or a Valve Index and you want to play an Oculus exclusive like Stormland, well, too bad. The game doesn't really support any hardware other than an Oculus headset. You pretty much can't play it unless you run a software called Revive, which allows you to play Oculus Store games on just about any headset. A lot of this is due to fundamental differences in APIs, or application programming interfaces, used between platforms. Oculus has their own API and Valve slash SteamVR uses their own as well, called OpenVR. If you're confused, just think of these things as being similar to DirectX or Vulkan. Except imagine if Nvidia graphics cards just didn't work with games that used Vulkan. That's sort of the situation that we have right now in VR. Steam VR supports, even if not totally natively, all headsets. While Oculus only officially supports their own hardware on their store. But this is where the cool part comes in. An amazing special little thing called OpenXR. I said months and months ago that the best thing ever just happened to VR when OpenXR was announced, and I wasn't lying. This is a really big deal for the entire industry. Everyone is working on this, including Valve and Oculus, together. Essentially what OpenXR does is it considers all VR headsets during the game building phase. With literally one click of a button within Unity or Unreal Engine, the game can fundamentally have support for any headset. No need for separate builds of the game or different headsets to run extra software like Revive on top. Oculus sent out OpenXR versions of Oculus Home a few months back, but Valve just announced the plans to completely switch over to OpenXR pretty soon. Right now on the beta branch of SteamVR, OpenXR is supported, which is an amazing mark of progress. If you think that I'm exaggerating or stretching any truths here, this is what Valve said directly. Quote, with OpenXR for the first time, developers will be able to build their content in a way that will allow them to span the myriad types of hardware and software platforms. Thanks to the Kronos Group and extensive hard work of OpenXR's many members, including AMD, ARM, Epic, Facebook, Google, HTC, Microsoft, Nvidia, Qualcomm, Unity, <laughs> Valve, and many more, VR now has a consolidated API to enable developers to bring universal VR support to their applications. End quote. Yeah, I'm not kidding. This has been a big deal for a long time, but Valve took a major step this week in rolling out OpenXR to the entire platform. This OpenXR support for everything means a lot. Easier ports for Quest, better running games, and soon enough, the Oculus Store could very well be something akin to the Epic Game Store or Origin. Yes, it's still a separate store, but not one that locks you out of playing their games if you don't own their hardware. Of course, this is on the developers to press the little check mark while they're building their game. It's already available 
available right now. So if a new game launches without OpenXR support, you have a finger to directly point at. Oculus and Valve want this to happen. Game developers just have to literally press the check mark. I think that we as consumers should expect any new game to have OpenXR support. And if it doesn't, we should demand it. Although I don't expect games to retroactively support it though. I'm not sure how it works going back to say Lone Echo and rebuilding the game with OpenXR, but games moving forward are a different story. All in all, this is amazing news for the VR industry as a whole. One standard, one community, that is VR from this point on. Moving on. Oculus has a brand new VR prototype and it looks like nothing we have ever seen before. Literal VR glasses. Now usually when we see things like this there are giant compromises. Yeah, the Panasonic VR goggles from CES earlier this year looked really cool, but in terms of field of view and tracking, the headset was very limited. But that's where this prototype is a little different. This isn't necessarily what Oculus is saying your headset will look like in the future. This is really just a mad flex by Facebook showing how small they can get it. Here are all the details and I think you might be a little surprised. The biggest fundamental difference between this and your headset, whatever it may be, is the fact that there are no lenses. Lenses are what allow your eyes to focus on an LED display and what gives it depth in the 3D effect that we have on current headsets. However, it's also what gives us lens distortion and god rays. This prototype not only ditches lenses but has an entirely new type of display called a holographic optic. Now you might be wondering, okay, but what are the trade-offs? And that's where this gets interesting. This is no low resolution display. This very prototype gives a field of view of more than 90 degrees, about the same as the actual measured FOV on an Oculus Rift S, believe it or not. Has a resolution of 1600 by 1200 per eye, and due to the type of displays used, the screen door effect is practically non-existent. Right now though, this prototype does have one giant flaw. The display is monochrome, only displaying black and green. Facebook has said it will be able to implement full color soon, offering, in their words, a wider color range and more vivid imagery than the current offerings. Of course, this was just a proof of concept, a prototype, not a product. This one you see in the pictures has zero tracking technology built in, no battery, no anything really. I have a feeling that Facebook just slapped this together to show how extremely thin their new displays are. But this is for good reason. According to a research paper created last August during the SIGGRAPH 2020 conference, VR has a major problem that only something like an extremely small form factor headset can solve. Quote, lightweight, high resolution sunglasses like VR displays may be the key to enabling the next generation of demanding virtual reality applications that can be taken advantage of anywhere and for an extended period of time. End quote. So industry experts believe that VR needs to be smaller, more affordable, more comfortable, and easier to get in and be in for long periods of time. And I can't argue with that, really. Right now, I'm happy with the current form factor of VR headsets. But I can imagine if something like the Valve Index were 60 to 70 percent smaller and lighter. That would be pretty amazing. And I think that my idea of VR 2.0 has shifted slightly. I used to think that the 2.0 designation would be when our current VR headsets are obsolete, but I'm now thinking that VR 2.0 should really be a form factor difference, as well as full wireless support. In the future, the inevitable wave of smaller, lighter headsets can still be compatible with current VR software. Just enjoying them would become far easier to do. I'm extremely excited for more information on a prototype like this and to see how all of this will trickle down into a consumer product. Don't expect it anytime soon, and it likely won't actually look like this. The actual glasses would make no sense for a VR headset. If this were a product now, it would have light leak like crazy. There's no audio, no tracking, no battery, no nothing. Like I've said a hundred times, this is just a proof of concept. But it's a concept that I can get behind. And I can't wait to see the next wave of smaller, thinner, more comfortable VR headsets within the next few years. But now it's time for a meme break! I don't think I've seen a bigger stretch in VR journalism ever before. By the way, rest in peace Mixer, and my heart goes out to all of my Mixer streaming friends in case you haven't heard, the streaming platform Mixer owned by Microsoft has been canned. Streamers like Ninja and Shroud that had multi-million dollar contracts with Microsoft, and all the streamers who followed the two onto the platform are left practically without a streaming platform at all now. Mixer has been shut down and has joined forces with Facebook Gaming, and this article titled Microsoft partnering with Facebook Gaming could mean big for Xbox VR. 
Uh, that's a bit of a stretch to say the least. As much as it makes sense for the new Xbox to have VR support, I mean, by now, VR can literally be done with a single USB cable. But the folks over at Xbox have already dissed VR saying, quote, nobody's asking for it, end quote. Look, as much as I want this to be true, I still find it funny at how much of a stretch the upload VR article goes for. That's like saying Elon Musk owns Tesla and SpaceX. Does this mean that my Tesla is going to have rocket boosters? Is that dangerous? Do I need an astronaut? not licensed to buy a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'll fully accept Xbox into the VR fam when they come around, but until then, Xbox plus VR seems like a pipe dream. But now, uh, back to the news. Oculus has announced that the Oculus Go, the three degree of freedom sub $200 headset is being completely discontinued. This kind of sucks because the Go was a good media viewing headset that was comfortable and worked well for what it was, plus it was really cheap. But to be honest, it's never really been for me personally. I would never want one, in fact, I I had one, then I immediately got rid of it. Too limited. But this is all a move by Oculus that kind of shows that they're really listening to us. The Quest is going to be their primary focus in terms of standalone headsets, saying, quote, the community response has been overwhelmingly positive and you've told us loud and clear that sixed off feels like the future of VR. That's why we're going all in and we won't be shipping any more three off VR products, end quote. But this wasn't the biggest news from Oculus. You know how the Oculus Quest game catalog is pretty small and the developers complain all the time about how hard it is to ship a game on the Quest because it has to be approved directly by Oculus. And if you really want to expand your catalog of games, you need something like SideQuest on your Oculus Quest. Well, within the next year, that will all change. Oculus is opening up a brand new distribution path on the Quest so that game developers can publish their games without direct approval from Oculus. This means that the Quest will receive a massive influx of games that have been waiting for approval, namely games like Pavlov, no longer needing side quest. This is going to be happening sometime in 2021, but I can expect that we'll hear more on it in the upcoming Oculus Connect 7 this fall. Two more things. Steam Summer Sale is on. VR games like Half-Life Alex, Boneworks, Skyrim VR, and many others are massively discounted. If you've been waiting for sales to buy some new VR games, this is the time to do it. And there are new VR covers from, well, <laughs> VR cover for the Valve Index. If you get real sweaty, you'll notice that a pleather VR cover or the stock foam will get pretty nasty, so they have launched these new silicone covers that are really easy to clean. This is especially nice for having multiple people over, using your headset, and staying sanitary. Link for the two of them will be in the description, they even have a camo. No question of the week today, but make sure to still leave your question of the week below. I will be answering two next week. This video just got pretty long as is, and we had a lot to cover. I will be streaming on Twitch today pretty much right after this video, so make sure you stop on by and we can continue this conversation about this week's VR happenings. Updated scheduling for that is in my Discord server. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas like Jake, Yumi, Very Evil Shadow, Studio Form VR, VR Balance, Benji, Zimf, and Julian. I couldn't be doing any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out. Yeah.